Hello students and welcome to this calculus video. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about particle motion and specifically velocity and acceleration. So go ahead and grab your calculators and let's get started. So as we're looking at these problems, we're talking about the position, velocity, or acceleration of particles. And normally what we're going to be saying is that they're just moving along a line on the x-axis and they can go back and forth. So right here, we're going to start looking at velocity and average and instantaneous velocity. We're going to be using P of T as the position function. And you can also think about P of T as the position function or what is also common is things like S of T or something like X of T. Any of these are very common and it's going to specify like this function X of T defines the particles motion are the particles position on a certain x-axis, a certain uh, line, something like that. And so uh, what is average velocity? Well, if we have the average velocity on the interval from A to B, well, all that's going to be is P of A minus P of B over A minus B. And uh, you might think, okay, that looks pretty familiar, and it should, okay? And then if we're talking about instantaneous velocity, we're going to be looking at that at x equals c. Well, when we're talking about instantaneous velocity, we just really want p prime of c. And that's going to get us there. And so what we're talking about is, when we're talking about velocity, we're talking about the rate of change of the position. What's the rate that that position is moving? And that's what gets us velocity. And notice here, I have specifically not said anything about speed because velocity includes direction. So let's kind of look here um, at a particle's position. It's given to us by this function e of t sine t, where p of t is measured in centimeters um, and our time is measured in seconds. So we want to first find what is the average velocity from t equals one to t equals three. So what do we want to do? Well, we want P of one minus P of three over one minus three. And that's what's going to get us our average velocity because we do have our function P right there. And um, after I put this into the calculator and I've calculated this a little bit, I got negative 0 0.547 over negative two, which simplifies to be 0 0.274. Remember, three is necessary, but if you can get to four decimal places, always go to four decimal places. But we haven't done what what are the units? So my y values up in the numerator of that fraction, I have the position minus position. So what are those units in terms of? Well, that is measured in centimeters. So in my numerator, I'm going to have centimeters. And then in my denominator, that's just T. That's just my time. So then that's where it's going to be. Well, how is our time measure? Well, that's going to be in seconds. So centimeters per second here. And what I want to do here in the next one is we want to find the instantaneous velocity of the particle at t equals 1.5. We want to say that V of 1.5 is equal to P prime of 1.5. Okay. Well, we need to first find P prime of T. So P prime of T. So what is that going to get us? Well, you're going to have to use the product rule here. So you expand this, we're going to get E to the T of sine T plus E to the T of cosine T. We're just going to kind of leave it like that because that's kind of easy to work with. You could factor out if necessary, but in these kind of free response questions, you don't need to do that. And so let's substitute 1.5 into all of those. When you substitute 1.5 in, you get 4.787. And again, we want the units of measure. So kind of like what we had in our average rate of change, we have the numerator over the denominator, we have centimeters per second. And so that's how we can find the average rate of change and we can also find the instantaneous velocity. So we're talking about velocity. We are given the position P and we're able to determine, okay, what is the average or what is the instantaneous velocity? So moving on, um, we want to make some connections to what we've been doing. So I said earlier that things were going to be 
pretty similar to what you've seen before. And that's because when we've had the slope of the secant line, well, we knew that was going to be f of a minus f of b over a minus b, right? If we just kind of change that and we have the position function, we have p of a minus p of b over a minus b. Well, what does that get us? Well, that gets us average velocity. So you want to think about, okay, we have the slope of a secant line connecting two points. We're also finding the average velocity. And then in terms of instantaneous velocity, well, we said, well, okay, in order to find that, that's going to be P prime of C. And if we just had like F prime of C or something like that, that would just be the slope of the tangent line. So secant line means average velocity, instantaneous velocity is tangent line. So we're able to find those. And so kind of let's make a further connection here. If we wanted the average and instantaneous acceleration, well, average acceleration on A to B would be the velocity at A minus the velocity at B over A minus B. Well, what you also want to keep in mind is that the velocity at time t is equal to the derivative of the position function at time t. So you just want to remember that as you're going through here is that, okay, if I don't have the velocity, all I have to do is take the derivative of the position and then boom, I have the velocity function. So if we want instantaneous acceleration at time c, well, all we would need there is v prime of c. Well, we can also think about this as p double prime of c. So if we can take the first derivative of the velocity, then we get acceleration. Or we could take the second derivative of the position function and also get acceleration. So notice here that it starts with position and then we go down to velocity and then we go down to acceleration. All right, so kind of from before on our last problem, we have the same function e of t, sine of t, and that's going to be our position function. So we want the average acceleration. So what I kind of want to do here is, all right, I want to find the velocity at time t and velocity is going to be p prime of t. All right, so in order to find p prime, we need to use our product rule. We do that, we're gonna get e of t times sine of t plus e of t cosine of t. And so now if I wanna do this and we're looking between one to three seconds, well, all we need to do is we need to say, so average acceleration will be equal to v of one minus v of three over one minus three. And uh, we put this into our calculator and we get negative 10.403. So kind of unit analysis here, we wanna think, okay, what is our velocity measured in? Well, our velocity is getting measured in centimeters per second. And then in my denominator right there, um, I have time in my denominator, so that's being measured per second. So I get divided by second. And so when I actually do this unit analysis, I get centimeters per second times one over second. And so my seconds become squared. So this acceleration is centimeters per second squared. And that's exactly how you're supposed to be writing that. And lastly, we want to get, okay, what is the instantaneous acceleration of the particle at time t equals 1.5? Well, we now need a of t so that we can get that instantaneous acceleration. So well, what is a of t going to be? Well, that's going to be v prime of t. And so we have v of t in our last problem. So let's take that derivative. And so if we take that derivative there, that's going to be two product rules. Oh, geez. So e of t times sine of t plus e of t cosine of t plus e of t cosine of t minus, because the cosine is going to be negative, so minus e of t sine of t. Because on the second one, we have cosine of t, and that's the derivative of that negative sine. All right, so what I notice here is that I have negative e of t sine of t and positive, and then I have plus uh, two. So this is going to, when I simplify this, I get plus two e of t, e to the t of cos times cosine of t. This is so much going on here. All right. So what I want here is a 
of 1.5. So since that's my formula, you just need to substitute 1.5 in for time and you're going to get out 0.634. And then what are our units? Just like last time, they're gonna be centimeters per second squared. And so that's your introduction to how we can connect position, velocity, and acceleration. In our next video, we're going to solidify this, what they mean and how they connect to F, F prime and F double prime. And we're going to start using them in some graphical problems. If you're not getting the exact same values that I got here, uh, please reach out to me. Maybe you're not in radian mode or something like that, but I can definitely help you if you reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches.